video, we'll describe how industrial pneumatic systems work. These five types of components represent the most common elements used in these systems. The ultimate goal of this entire collection of components, in most cases, is to create motion that will do some type of work in an industrial setting. Pneumatics is one of the most widely used technologies to automate repetitive processes. Some common applications might be to move product from one place to another, or to press or clamp pieces of a product together. To best understand how the system works, we will start at the beginning with a compressor and follow the process through to the end goal of motion. The compressor generates the energy that powers the system in the form of compressed air. In order to generate compressed air, the compressor draws in atmosphere from its surroundings and squeezes it or confines it into a smaller space, creating the energy needed to drive the system. Once compressed, the air needs to be dried and cleaned so that harmful particulates such as rust or dirt does not clog up the moving parts in the system. The compressed air will travel through a tube or line to the next component, called an air preparation unit, or FRL. FRL is short for filter, regulator, and lubricator, which are common pieces that make up the air preparation unit. Typically, the first unit in the air preparation system is what is called a bulk liquid separator, which circulates or spins the air using specially shaped veins. The rapid circulation of the pressurized air sheds unwanted moisture due to centrifugal force. The next unit is a filter, which further removes particulate and moisture in a two-stage process. Just like in the bulk liquid separator, a series of veins or louvers in the filter circulates the air in the first stage. In the second stage, the air passes through a screen of sorts, called an element, in order to catch unwanted debris. Once dried and cleaned, it is common to adjust the level of air pressure coming out of the compressor. This adjustment has an impact on how much force the system generates. Higher pressure allows the actuator to put out more force, and lower pressure creates less force. The regulator achieves this using a spring-loaded assembly. The knob on the regulator adjusts the force of the control spring to achieve a desired pressure set point. Whenever the downstream pressure level drops lower than the desired set point, the poppet, or internal valve, opens a pathway for the higher pressure upstream to flow downstream. This continues until the pressure in the system reaches the regulator's set pressure. At this point, the poppet or internal valve closes until there is a new downstream demand. It is also common to have a pressure gauge on a regulator so the user can monitor downstream pressure. Finally, in specific applications, such as air motors or pneumatic tools, a lubricator can be added to distribute a fine mist of lubricant into the compressed air to help lubricate downstream components. Now that the compressed air is clean, dry, and set to the correct pressure for the application, the next step is to direct it where to go to create motion. A directional control valve is used to achieve this task. This directional control valve has a series of internal pathways that can connect the air coming into the inlet port with one of two avenues to leave the valve, called working ports. Depending on the position of the moving element, which is typically called a spool, the air will be blocked from traveling down one pathway and allowed to travel down the other. The high spots on the spool, called lands, will block the air from proceeding down one path, while the lower sections on the spool, called grooves, will allow air to flow around them and proceed to one of the working ports. In this common type of valve, when the unit is not activated, the spool is forced to the left side of the valve by a spring. In this position, you can see that this land blocks air from going out the number four working port and instead is forced to go out working port number two because the grooved lower section of the spool allows air to flow past it and out to the number two working port. In order to change the direction of the air to the number four working port, the valve needs to be turned on. In most automated equipment, a PLC or programmable logic controller will instruct the valve to shift using an electrical signal. When the signal arrives at a portion of the valve called a solenoid coil, a magnetic field is created that pulls a centrical piece called a plunger towards it. When that plunger is unseated, it allows air from inside the valve, known as pilot pressure, to push the spool to the right. Once the spool reaches the far right side of the valve, the lands or high spots are now closing off the passage to the number two working port and instead directing the compressed air to flow to the number four working port. 
When the signal from the PLC is removed, the force generated by the electromagnet is also removed, at which point the spring on the plunger returns it to its normal state, which removes the air signal that is pushing on the spool. The spring on the opposite end will return the spool to its default position once again, directing air back out the number two working port. The PLC can now direct air to whichever port is needed whenever it is needed. The next component in the system, the actuator, will allow us to do some useful work with the air we compressed, cleaned, and redirected. In most applications, the purpose of changing the direction of the compressed air with the valve is to cause motion in different directions. Parker makes a wide variety of actuators, or cylinders as they are also commonly called, that will convert compressed air into motion. The most common type of cylinder is the rotted variety displayed here. The actuator will create motion using the energy of the compressed air that is supplied to it by the directional control valve. We can see that the working port number 4 is connected to the back or cap end of the cylinder. When the compressed air pushes on the piston, it is forced to move forward inside a hollow cylinder that is commonly called the body. The piston is attached to a rod that will extend as a result of the force generated by the compressed air acting on the piston. The actuator will continue to move in that direction until it reaches its physical limit. Or, if the force resisting motion, commonly called the load, is higher than the force of the compressed air, in which case the pressure regulator could be adjusted to a higher pressure. Now that we have completed the extension, we will need a method to retract the actuator to its original position. The directional control valve will achieve this by changing the direction the compressed air flows from number 4 working port to the number 2 working port. The number 2 working port is connecting to the head end of the actuator, and when the compressed air pushes on the opposite side of the piston, it will reverse the direction of the piston rod assembly. This reverse motion is typically referred to as retracting. For this actuator to retract, the air that is already filling the cylinder needs to go somewhere, which is commonly referred to as exhausting. The exhaust air is illustrated by the red color and is shown exiting the cylinder and flowing back through the valve, out the muffler, to the atmosphere. This system can repeat this process as often as the PLC tells it to move things from point A to point B in one example. In this example, the PLC is telling the actuator to move this product by sending a signal to the directional control valve, which is using the clean, dry, compressed energy to power the actuator. Pneumatics are also commonly used to press two components together in an assembly process to help form a finished good through the combination of Parker's air preparation. Hi, today we will see a short lecture on PC component of pneumatic system. So as you can see in this uh, first slide, uh, that's uh, showing a complete new pneumatic system started from air compressor, air receiver, dryer, service unit, control valve and also actuator. The dotted box shows the air supply and conditioning element. So meaning that's the place where the compressed air is produced and also uh, prepared before passed to the system. Here we will see uh, each element of this uh, pneumatic system. So it's a very important and commonly asked question in exam. So I hope you can pay some attention. Okay. So the first part will be air compressor. Okay. This is the place where the compressed air is generated. Okay. As you can see in this uh, image here. So this is the uh, physical image of uh, 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 air compressor, uh, available air compressor. Okay, so what air compressor normally does, it will convert a mechanical energy from the electric or combustion motor and it will change to a potential energy that can be used uh, in the pneumatic system. Okay, uh, air compressor generally divided into two, okay, two types. Okay, the first type we call it as a positive displacement, so it's generally use a decreasing volume concept in order to generate the output pressure and the second type uh, we call it as a dynamic device so which can be move is a movable so it will accelerated by a turbine uh, to produce kinetic energy and then the kinetic energy uh, later on will be converted into uh, pressure that uh, we, we are using okay so generally the available uh, air compressor is a positive displacement type okay so you can see 
uh, the symbol symbol for a compressor is this uh, we can find this in your fluid scene okay so there are generally two types of uh, uh, compressor okay uh, the first type is a piston type compressor and uh, it divided into single stage and also multi stage the single stage has a uh, working range it can generate uh, air uh, in a 3 to 7 bar range of uh, pressure okay so it's a uh, it's useful for a smaller system pneumatic system which uh, requires 3 to 7 bars uh, and uh, what it does you, you can see in this uh, picture so the air will enter air will enter to the piston so piston when it move okay, when it move downwards okay air will enter then it will comp it will move uh, the piston will move up upwards so uh, because of the reducing volume so the air will be compressed and it will be sent out to uh, air outlet okay so the pictures are showing how it is done okay so the second type of uh, piston type compressor okay piston type is the commonly used uh, type of compressor okay so the second type is a multi-stage compressor so as you can see it involves uh, two or more pistons okay two or more pistons so the first stage uh, similar like just now uh, so the air inlet when the piston is moving downward so because uh, more volume available so the air will be pushed inside so it's a fully mechanical okay once the piston is moving up the first stage piston is moving up so the uh, pressure will be the air will be pressurized and sent to the second piston so in between you can see uh, uh, intercooler so intercooler is actually a, a place where the temperature of the compressed air will be reduced okay so it's a it's a common question also okay in the exam what's the function of intercooler so make sure you understand and uh, find out uh, what uh, intercooler does okay then after the air or the compressed air is a uh, cool it will pass to the second uh, stage piston so which normally will generate a higher pressure okay so the multi-stage compressor uh, can produce uh, pressure up to 250 bars okay in the four stages okay, 250 bar is actually very big okay so if your application requires a higher pressure so you can consider multi-stage uh, compressor okay so this is the working principle of multi-stage uh, reciprocating compressor okay so you can see follow the arrow okay how it is done okay so the air, atmospheric air will enter so similar when the piston move downward air will enter then it will compress and send to the intercooler okay before uh, the temperature is reduced and passed to the second stroke stroke of piston yeah, so, so this is the multi-stage uh, reciprocating compressor. Okay, uh, there are various stages, various uh, components available. Okay, so multi-stage reciprocating compressor normally we can see in a uh, factories, uh, and a smaller version you always can see in the night market pasamalam. Okay, so this is on the uh, piston type compressor okay we, we will see obviously why when piston type compressor are used surely it has a, a only advantages and also disadvantages okay we will see the, the advantages of a piston type compressor first okay piston type compressor are available in wide range of capacity and pressure um, since a pneumatic can be used from as low or uh, of uh, five to seven bar up to 250 bar okay so it has a very wide range of uh, pressure available so depends on your application you can decide uh, how you want where you want the piston to be used 
so based on that it has a flexibility for you to uh, use okay and uh, the second advantage will be it can be used for high air pressure up to 250 bars okay and it, it, it is a uh, possible uh, via multi staging oh, okay so overall efficiency is better compared to the other type of comp compressor okay and obviously it will come with uh, some disadvantages okay so since the piston compressor generate inertia okay inertia the uh, so it will shake the machine the compressor will shake so you need to have an extra fitting okay uh, you need to have an extra frame or you need to drill to the particular floor so that it won't move much okay and obviously when it move much it will start to produce noise which will cause a discomfort okay so that's the first disadvantage and the second disadvantage is it can uh, start to produce pulsating flow of air so meaning the air flow is not fixed okay so uh, sometimes similar like our water pressure sometimes it will be fast sometimes it will be slow so depends on your application if your application requires a constant uh, flow of air so you need to have uh, additional damping chambers uh, or receiver tanks uh, in order to assist you okay. so then we have a diaphragm type of compressor okay diaphragm if you see in this picture so you have a hydraulic fluid in and also hydraulic fluid out so when the hydraulic fluid in so the diaphragm will uh, move downward and the air will be entered and also uh, when the piston moves up the diaphragm will move up and also the it will help in the air outlet so where this diaphragm type compressor will be used it will be used in a place where uh, the contamination is undesired okay especially in the food uh, and pharmaceutical and chemical industry where small small dirts in the pneumatic system will cause a lot of damage okay so in that case you can consider using a diaphragm type of compressor okay and uh, apart from this uh, piston type and also diaphragm type so you have other types of compressor like a rotary rotary compressor so i i don't discuss it here so you can refer it in the lecture note okay so uh, that's the first component okay the compressor now we move to the component second component so once the air is compressed it will pass down to air receiver tank okay so from the name itself you know that it will receive and store the air compressed air in order to be used uh, in a different uh, application okay so air receiver provide constant air pressure so similar like how i was saying earlier uh, when you have a pulsating air uh, it can disturb your system so you need to keep the compressor in a tank and from the tank you can continuously give a constant air pressure okay so that's the main function of a receiver tank and it, another function of a receiver tank is a emergency supply okay so in case your main supply is a block so you can have a supply from an emergency tank in order to uh, supply to your system so uh, there uh, it can be an alternative for power failure conditions okay and the selection of air tank is uh, depending on the application okay since uh, if your system is very big so you might need a receiver tank a bigger receiver tank okay so it depends on your application okay so this is a typical uh, air receiver tank okay so it has a inlet can okay, it has a outlet outlet is connected to shut off valve shut off valve is a, a valve that you can control the speed uh, and also the amount of compressed air to be released and you have a thermometer okay so to check the temperature of the compressed air and you have a pressure gauge to measure the pressure and you have a safety relief valve so if you 
yeah, in case uh, the amount of compressor is a uh, lot so it can relieve and uh, you have a manual manual is actually to uh, monitor okay or check or do maintenance to the storage tank and you have a drain drain all as well as well okay so four main functions okay four main functions of a receiver tank okay first uh, is a storage okay second uh, is a pulsating damping i already explained earlier so it can uh, give a smooth pulsa pulsing flow of air and the second is uh, it can be a place for the compressor to be cool okay so to be cool and uh, the fourth one is a place for the uh, dirt and condensate uh, to be uh, removed okay to be removed okay so this is a uh, four uh, main functions of air receiver tank okay so we move to the third part third part uh, is the air dryer okay air dryer so air dryer uh, is actually used to uh, remove excessive moisture moisture from the uh, compressor okay so um, it is important to fit the necessary air drying equipment okay to reduce the moisture content uh, content of the system okay because uh, some system uh, cannot have uh, moisture inside your compressor especially if we to use uh, iron uh, iron bar or uh, which can produce the rust in your system and because of the rust the system can be blocked okay so it's a uh, it's purely uh, depend on your system so it's uh, always good to dry the air before supply to the main system okay so there are three types of uh, uh, methods okay for drying the air the first one is a low temperature drying second is a adsorption drying and a third one is absorption drying okay adsorption and absorption are two different process so you need to know so what's the difference between it okay so we move to the first one okay so the first one uh, if you can see so you have a air inlet and it move to the cooling unit so cooling unit as a refrigerant okay, refrigerant is a cooling element okay available at a very low temperature so it will cools down the air as it flows and uh, it will supply back to the system okay or the next element okay that is the low temperature drying okay from higher temperature uh, air compressed air it will move it will be reduced to a lower temperature is a very typical one okay the second one is a adsorption dryer okay ad adsorp okay adsorb okay adsorb means so you will have a chemical okay you have a chemical like silica gel so silica gel is uh, something that you can see maybe in your shoe box okay in order to uh, reduce the uh, reduce the uh, water okay water from the surrounding air so it will have a chemical okay what adsorption means so adsorption means the chemical will be stick on the uh, sorry the water uh, from the air will be stick on the surface of the chemical so meaning uh, if the chemical is a uh, round shape so the water will be stick on the uh, chemical okay so uh, the water uh, will not be available on the surf on the surrounding so if it pass through the chemical it will be sticking on the surface of the chemical okay so normally we will use a silica gel to decrease the local humidity and also activated uh, alumina okay so you can see in this picture so i will go okay so when the moisture air enters so it will pass to the adsorbers okay adsorbers will contain the chemical so when it pass through it will pass through the chemical uh, surface and uh, when there is a moisture it will stick to the surface 
so adsorption means sticking on the surface okay so we will move to the second one absorption so absorption a b s o r p okay absorption and adsorption is uh, two different thing the adsorption mean is still use the same chemical but this chemical uh, when it pass through uh, it it will uh, absorb the water from the air after it is absorbed the chemical water will become a liquid okay, like a normal water so the chemical water can be something with a higher viscosity and it will become a, li a liquid and it will pass through uh, the draining hole okay so we will see the picture later the commonly used chemicals are urea uh, lithium and also calcium chloride okay uh, so it's a easier it's a easier option easier installment uh, and of, of the equipment and you don't have a mechanical wear also if you see the previous uh absorption or lower low temperature drying so you have a flow and you have a lot of equipments available uh, but absorption is just a simple setup where no mechanical wear because no moving part okay and also no external energy required okay so you can see here so the moist moist air is entering and it will pass through the chemical once the chemical receives the moisture uh, from a chemical process it will move to become a water and it will uh, go out from the condensate drain okay so that's a simple uh, simple setup and we move to the final part of the uh, air con uh, compressed air conditioning okay just now we saw a lot of parts so this is the final part which we call it as a air service equipment in the air service uh, equipment you practically you have uh, three things okay so the first thing is uh, filter regulator and also lubricator okay we call it as a frl unit okay f for filter r for regulator and l for lubricator i think from the name itself you can understand uh, you know so what are the things that you need uh, the the function of the particular devices okay so we move to the first one okay before that we see the three aim of air service unit okay why this air service unit is crucial okay, in your system okay the first thing is uh, to to provide a suitable cleanliness to the air okay so all the unwanted things you want to produce a a good uh, compressed air to your pneumatic system so you need to have this air service unit in order to filter out unwanted uh, unwanted thing and you clean the compressed air so the second one is uh, to give a stabilized air and also not producing uh, air supply more than the maximum pressure allowable by the pneumatic system okay so meaning you regulate you control the pressure so that it is suitable for your pneumatic system if not the the devices or equipment in your pneumatic system might get spoiled when you produce a lot of pressure okay and third one is uh, lubricating oil okay so uh, you your compressed air must have a little bit of uh, lubricating oil so that uh, the pistons or the actuators in your pneumatic system can have a smooth uh, flow okay so it's not a st uh, stuck in between uh, because of uh, no oil so normally we know the function of oil is to uh, smoothen the reduce the friction and also provide a smooth uh, uh, smooth uh, uh, how to say so it will produce a smooth movement okay so uh, the function of a uh, lubricator is actually to lubricate the valve and also actuators okay, in the system okay so that's the uh, three uh, important aims of the system so you can see the first one okay so the first one is the filter so this is how the filter looks like okay similar like our water filter in the room 
so the air will enter and it will have a filter layer in order to filter out unwanted contaminants okay from the system and the second part is your uh, lubricator the lubricator uh, sorry second one is your regulator so regulator will uh, control the temperature okay if you said uh, it's only allowable 100 bar so it will only allow 100 bar of airflow okay into the system and the final one is the lubricator so it clean dehydrate regulated uh, lubricator compressed air or cylinder valve uh, tools and also motor okay so this is the symbol the symbol with lubricator and also without lubricator so you will use this in your fluid scene okay so we see some of the construction uh, so you can see the air is entering and you have a filter element in order to filter out before it pass to the outlet okay so and the second one the air pressure regulator so if the out outlet pressure is low so it will increase the pressure again okay so it will get more uh, supply from the pressure it has uh, some a mechanism inside in order to increase the pressure to the re desired pressure okay this uh, in the case of uh, when the pressure is low and if the pressure is too high the the entering pressure is too high so it will release through vent hole and to to decrease the pressure okay that's the mechanism inside okay and the final one is uh, the air lubricator Okay, so it will reduce friction and corrosion in the air valve. Okay, so it will control the amount of oil in the system. Okay, so if uh, you produce uh, too much oil to the system, so the, your equipment might get spoiled. Okay, so you need to control the amount of oil supplied to the system so that uh, your system can last long. Okay, so that is uh, basically. Uh, about the basic uh, component basic elements of your uh, pneumatic system okay so you can see here in the industrial air compressed system so you have a lot of things a lot of things uh, involved so you can see uh, it start from motor and it will go to the compressor then it will go to all your filters FRL okay so uh, you have a lot of things involved okay in the industrial compressed air system it will have a lot of things uh, involved okay because it uh, depends on the application so i hope today in this video you understood uh, the function of uh, all the elements in a basic uh, basic uh, pneumatic system so start from compressor uh, then we move. We we have seen the drying, uh, the receiver. Then we have a dryer. Then we have a FRL unit. Um, so all these are we call it as a conditioning element. So all will prepare the conditioning elements. Uh, function is to prepare your compressed air so that it will be suitable for your application. Okay, once it uh, it clean and also prepared then only it will supply to your pneumatic system so i i hope you understood okay so if you don't understand uh, so please uh, repeat this video in order to understand so i will give you some i i have given you some questions in between so try to answer it okay we will see in the next slide thank you